Hey guys, welcome to episode number 27 of Ask Jungle Scout. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. It's been exciting here at Jungle Scout. We've in fact just released a brand new video called How to Sell on Amazon. Now you've heard me talk about the million dollar case study a number of times. It's probably the ultimate course or resource on selling on Amazon. It's a webinar series and there's now well over 20 webinars. So there's well over 20 hours worth of content there. It's an in-depth guide to selling on Amazon. However, the video that we've just released is a 40 minute condensed version from A to Z, a complete guide to selling on Amazon. So if you're brand new and you wanna get an overview of the process, or you just want a bit of a refresher of all the steps from A to Z, then check out our brand new video, How to Sell on Amazon. If you enjoy that one and it helps, please let us know in the comments of that video also. This week we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna share with you some question and answers from a recent webinar that we held. And more often, when one person is wondering, other people are wondering too. So I hope you get some value from these questions and answers. Okay, Angela asks, if I've tracked 10 products and I need to narrow down to the top one or two, how would you go about it? There, there's a number of, of things I would look at. So one of the main things I would look at is which products give you the biggest profit margin. So you can look at, okay, uh, go to somewhere like Alibaba, Alibaba, however you pronounce it. Uh, it's a great place to find suppliers. You can go on there, search for the product that you're after. You can then contact those suppliers to get some quotes or a lot of listings will give you kind of a rough idea of how much that product will cost. So I would go and try to find out roughly how much that product will cost. You can see from the listings already on Amazon, you can see roughly what they're priced and you can have an idea about how much you can sell for. And then, you know, here in the product database, um, you're able to get the, 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 the net amount. So you can, you can find out the FBA fees. So you can get an idea of the product cost. Um, I would just allocate one to $2 for the shipping just as a, a, as a, a rough number. If it's not too big, if it's just kind of a standard size product and it's not too heavy or anything, then it's probably going to be somewhere between a dollar and $2 for shipping. So basically with those calculations, I would try to figure out which products have the biggest profit margin. The other thing I would look at as well is which products uh, are the cheapest to source. Okay, so yeah, I, I would write down sort of from top to bottom, which are the products that give you the best profit margin um, and then also which products would cost you the, the least. So you've got sort of the biggest upside and then you've also got the lowest risk products. And then from sort of those two lists, I would sort of narrow it down to what I am the, the most comfortable with. You know, you might have one that has a, a really big profit margin, but it might cost a lot more. So maybe you might be better off um, or you might feel more comfortable with a product that costs less that, you know, it doesn't give you quite as much of a profit margin, but is a, a little bit less risk because you're not investing as much up front. So I hope that makes sense. That's how I would kind of go about it. Kevin asks, how long should we track a certain niche? Days, weeks, etc." As a rule of thumb, I would say about a couple of weeks. If it's a product that you're really honing in on, really the answer is as long as you need in order to be certain about a particular product, okay? Yeah, so again, coming back to this example here, this is a good one for this yoga mat. Well, actually, even, even at the seven-day view, this one actually has some really good data. It gives you 19, 8, 9, 10, 14, 8, 11. Uh, and what's the average showing? 10 per day. Yeah, if you've got uh, seven days of real sales data like this, this is actually pretty good. But still at the minimum, I would prefer 14 days. It gives you a bit more, a bit better of a picture of how well this product is selling. So yeah, I guess I would say as a rule of thumb, say 14 days or two weeks. David says, I have a tracking limit of 40 products. Theoretically, if I tracked one product and it had a niche of 40 products and I put them in the tracker, would it count as one product to the limit or would I not be able to add any more products? Yeah, so that's correct. So really the correct way to say it is um, you can track 
40 listings in the product tracker, okay? So in terms of how many niches you're investigating, I would always aim for somewhere between like seven to 10 listings per niche. So with a tra tracking limit of 40 products, I'd say you could probably track um, four to five different niches at one time. David says, what's something you wish you knew starting out that you know now? Um, <laughs> probably just about everything. I'm trying to like narrow it down to, to, to one thing. Probably one of the greatest mistakes I made when starting out is that I tried launching my second product too soon. Okay, I had one product that was starting to do well and then I was really excited about bringing in another product. So I spent money on a new product but because you, you, know, you need to spend money on marketing it, uh, doing promotional giveaways, which costs you money and PPC and so forth, it's not as profitable at the start because you don't have any reviews. Um, because I launched a second product, I then ran out of money you know, to restock my first product and then I, I ran out of stock on my first product and then subsequently... Um, you know, I dropped my keyword rankings a little bit and I basically just lost some momentum on my first product, which I had to try to catch up. And then, um, yeah, the, the lesson learned was that I should have stuck with my first product a lot longer until I was very, very confident that I could pull away money for a second product. So that's probably the, the, the big takeaway. Um, of course, all the little details once you've been through it once, it gets a lot easier. You get a lot more confident. You learn so much more and you're always going to go, oh, I wish I would have known this when I started out. However, what I would say is that just starting out um, and, and just going through the process is super, super handy. Um, you know, you can listen to me or Greg or anyone talk as much as you like, but just going through and doing the process, you're going to learn so much more. Uh, I mean, I'd even recommend if you don't have much money to, to spend or you're, you know, a little bit more risk averse and you're uh, a little bit worried about doing this, go to somewhere like AliExpress. Alibaba is, is a great place to source products. AliExpress, I think, is connected to them. But um, with AliExpress, you can actually get smaller minimum order quantities. So on Alibaba, you'd have to order at least 500 or 1,000 units at a time. In most cases, you can often negotiate your first order down to maybe two or 300. But generally, they're larger order uh, quantities. What you can do if you're a little bit nervous is go to AliExpress. You can order like one unit. But I'd order like 20, 30, 50 units in just a very, very small amount send it into Amazon so that you get familiar with how to create a listing, how to set up a shipment and sending it into Amazon. Like you don't have to spend very much money at all to send in 20 or 30 units, but just doing actually doing that, you, you get to understand how the process works and then you'll feel more confident when you send in 300 or 500 units um, from Alibaba. So yeah, even doing that, I, I reckon is kind of a good strategy, just getting that experience under your belt. So I kind of went off on a tangent there, David, but I, I hope something in there was kind of useful. David says, how do you recognize when your first product is stable enough to even think about trying a second product? I think it ultimately comes down to the math. Now, it, it's kind of too much to go into right now, but once you've gone through the process once with one product, you'll be able to figure it out. So really, I would do the calculations for a second product and kind of go, okay, how much is it going to cost me for my first order of 500 or 1,000 units? We've actually, as part of the Million Dollar Case Study a couple of weeks ago, we had on the founder of Forecastly, which is basically inventory management and forecasting. So forecasting how many sales you'll get. And so that that uh, episode explains this really well, but you need to figure out how many units do I need for my first order? Because you need enough units to help you launch your product because you might say, okay, I might need like a hundred units to give away at 50% off in order to launch my listing. But if you give away 50% off, 
you're probably gonna break even or lose some money on those hundred units. And then once your listing starts doing well, you need to you know, have enough units left over to last you until you can bring in a second shipment so that you don't run out. So you can, you know, using the strategies from this webinar, which I'll share with you, you can sort of work out how many units you'll need for your first order. And so from that, you can then work out, okay, how much is that going to cost me in total? So let's say my first order is going to cost me $2,000 for my second product. Now what I would do is I would calculate, okay, how much profit am I making currently? Let's say I'm making 15 sales per day. Each product is giving me $4 profit. Um, I, I would calculate, you know, can I afford to take away $2,000 um, without and still have enough left over to bring in more inventory for my first product? Um, without it running out. So yeah, once you watch this, in, this, watch this webinar on inventory management and forecasting, it'll kind of give you some of these equations so that you can figure this stuff out. But yeah, essentially it's like figure out how much your second product is going to cost. And then you need to figure out when can I afford to take away that amount and my first you know, product, um, I can still afford to bring in shipments without it running out. <laughs> I know I struggle to kind of get through that, but that's essentially the, the, the process. It's kind of math and, and figuring it out. Now, when I first started, I had no idea how to do this, but you, as I said, by going through the process, you start to figure out how to do it. Um, for me, it was like a lot of pen on paper, lots of calculating. Um, but yeah, you, you can sort of figure it out. But generally, I think, Usually, I, I think from my experience anyway, whenever you're, you think that you're ready to get in a new product, you probably should wait. That's, that's been true for me anyway. So that's all the questions for this week, guys. I hope you got some value from those. Give us a big thumbs up if you did. Also, remember to drop your questions in the comment section below this video for a chance to have it answered. We're gonna mix up the questions a lot more, so make sure you drop it in the comment section below this video. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you next time.